Facts starts now. Good evening, I'm Cheryl Mercedes. In just a few hours, we're expecting strong to severe thunderstorms to move into the Houston area. Here's what downtown Houston looks like right now. There are plenty of clouds already out in the sky. Let's go to meteorologist Tim Pandages and Tim, what's the timing for tonight's storms? Uh, we're looking at conditions going downhill over the next few hours. So we've, right now we've got no warnings up, but we do have a few watches for our northern cities and counties. We're talking Grimes, Walker, San Jacinto and Polk all under a severe thunderstorm watch until 10 o'clock this evening, but we expect a threat for severe weather to continue long after 10 p.m., right up to around midnight, maybe 1, 2 a.m., especially farther to the south. So I do expect that we see Montgomery, Liberty, and even portions of Waller possibly added to this watch list as we go into the next few hours from the Storm Prediction Center. So we'll keep that, uh, we'll keep you updated for that. So what are the main threats here? Notice it's a severe thunderstorm watch. It's not a tornado watch. The threat for tornadoes is low, but it is not non-zero. So keep that in mind. The threat's always there, but a much larger threat for damaging wind gusts of over 70 miles per hour. Within that, some of these cells we've already seen well to the north have had a history of producing large hail. That diameter size could be at least an inch. So around golf ball size, it's not larger. And with some slow movement of these downpours, street ponding and street flooding, although brief, is still a possibility as well into the first half of the overnight. Here's radar now. Not much going on. Very quiet through much of the area. Any activity thus far has been isolated to our far northern cities and counties. Now, this cell here, playing it out over the last hour, was at one point severe. It is now weakened, but notice it hasn't moved very much. It's dropped a lot of rain here just to the southwest of Lovelady, but notice what's knocking on the door just to the north. You see these polygons, severe thunderstorm warnings for this line diving south along 45 out of course Sakana, tons of lightning with these cells, and they are starting to pick up more of a southerly trajectory to them. I expect them to accelerate as they drop south along 45 through this evening. So what are the models doing? I'm going to show you two separate short range, high resolution models, both initializing quite well. So this is what the models think it, the atmosphere looks like currently, which you just saw radar very much in line with that. There's Dallas. Here's I-45. These storms develop and drop south. Notice it is indicating the development of multiple supercells developing with an easterly component, but also a southerly component as we get towards 8 o'clock this evening. Those those cells continue to drop into our northern zones by 9, 10 o'clock. Notice they really start to become more uh, widespread to the east of I-45 as we approach the 10, 11 o'clock hour and then dropping their way through Liberty and eventually into Chambers and offshore. Meanwhile, those to the southwest of Houston not seeing much according to this model as we get towards midnight. There could be a few isolated cells that develop to the west and then they dwindle as we lose the daytime heating. The storm energy has been depleted. Here's our other model. Same initialization. It is indicating a very uh, similar outcome right at this time and those storms develop but they're moving much faster so here we are at seven o'clock an hour from now and we've already got that leading line building in a northern grimes and walker near huntsville is that a little bit ahead of schedule probably will we see a blend of both of these being the solution i think so so likely this will be a little bit farther to the north at that point in time but diving south accelerating as it does so but this holds the line together much more so stretching from Columbus all the way to Liberty on I-10 here, keeping it together with the gusty wind threat through 9, 10 o'clock, and then it drops south and does start to weaken as it does so as we get later and later in the evening because we don't have the daytime heating. Earlier storm arrival, much more likelihood of widespread severe storms. Later arrival, meaning we don't have that storm energy, storms will likely be depleting that energy and uh, weakening as they drop to the south. Temperatures today, we've been cooking, and here we are at 6 o'clock and still in the 90s. You factor in dew points that are in the upper 60s and low 70s, and this is still what it feels like out there. 102 at Tomball, 101 at Sugarland feels like 103 in El Campo. And look at Brenham and Cleveland both feeling like it's 105, and the heat will become the big story going forward. A big dome of high pressure will build north out of Mexico and expand. Hot and humid conditions, upper 90s Monday and Tuesday. 
Highs near 100 Tuesday into Wednesday, and you add in the humidity, and we'll have heat index values over 100 consistently. In fact, likely getting up to heat advisory criteria by later in the week when we see several days, potentially with the air temperature at 100 degrees. Highs tomorrow, maybe a degree or two warmer than today. 96 at Houston, 96 at Conroe, 93 Bay City, Sugarland, 97. It'll feel like 102 to 104 tomorrow afternoon. There's your seven-day outlook after our rain chances tonight. It's just a long stretch of hot, sunny, dry weather with temperatures headed towards the century mark as early as Thursday. Cheryl? Triple digits, here they come. Thank you so much, Tim. Stay weather smart with the KHOU 11 app. You can get updated forecasts or look at any live radar anytime. It's free for you in our app store. Tonight, Mayor Sylvester Turner is celebrating the city's fourth gun buyback event. He says it's the most successful so far. It was at NRG Park this morning. In total, more than 1,400 guns were turned in. That includes 490 semi-automatic handguns and 188 semi-automatic rifles. Participants got gift cards in exchange. Mayor Turner says more than 4,200 guns have been turned in across all of the events. Tonight, police are investigating a deadly confrontation at a West Houston apartment complex. Now, this happened around 3.30 this morning on Woodway Drive near Fondren Road. Police say a man who lives there installed several security cameras after a string of thefts. Now, he claims he noticed two men coming through a hole in the fence, so he grabbed his gun and confronted them. The six-year-old man is saying that when he approached them, advised them they needed to leave, they presented a weapon, and they started shooting. Uh, he shot numerous times. Police say the man who lived in the home was shot in the leg and will be okay. Now, one of the other two men was hit several times. He was taken to the hospital and died. Investigators are looking at surveillance. They have not found the other guy or the other gun. Tonight, another big name officially entered the race for Houston mayor. John Whitmire has been a state senator since 1983, and he kicked off his campaign at Minute Maid Park. It appears a few hundred people were there, including union leaders from the police and fire departments and Congresswoman Sylvia Garcia. Whitmire says he will use the time and relationships he built as a state senator to help Houston. Austin understands how important Houston is. How Houston goes is how the state of Texas will go. And I'll be delivering that message and reminding them every day if I need to. Whitmire's main competition is Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee. She has spent nearly three decades in Congress. Before that, she spent many years in local government as a Houston city council member and municipal judge. That does it for us for now. Thanks so much for joining us here for our webcast. We'll have live weather coverage for you tonight on KHOU News at 10. Good evening.